while Joe Biden is on TV comparing Donald Trump to a yo-yo and literally arguing with himself, Bernie Sanders is actually proposing real solutions that would help people make it out of this global pandemic. And the reason why Bernie Sanders is able to speak so clearly to the needs of working Americans is because he has already demonstrated that he is knowledgeable of what normal Americans are experiencing. So he knows and can predict the depths of of this crisis. He knows how bad it could get if we don't take action, and not just any action, very precise action to protect the working class. So in an interview with Chris Hayes on MSNBC, he demonstrated why out of a time when we really need a leader, Bernie Sanders is the leader we've all been looking for. Listen to the way he just eloquently and beautifully explains how we have to make sure we look out for working people and, you know, this crisis shouldn't have just made us aware of, you know, the needs of working class people. You know, the fact that it got to this point to where people are living paycheck to paycheck and are now missing paychecks, it's not just a crisis that's created by the global pandemic. This is a crisis that we kind of brought on by ourselves with our absolutely ruthless and brutal economic system known as capitalism. Take a look. We face at this moment, in terms of the pandemic, uh, in terms of the economic meltdown, the most serious set of crises that have been faced in this country perhaps for 100 years. And our job right now is to think big, is to act in an unprecedented way, both in terms of health care and in terms of the economy. And it is going to cost a lot of money, but not spending that money now will make a bad situation even worse. Because as you know, there are some people out there who are talking about by the end of June, unemployment being 20, 25, 30 percent. So right now, our focus has got to be, in my view, to make sure that all workers in this country are kept whole. They continue to get their paycheck to make certain that in addition to that, people get a check of two thousand uh, dollars a month. Uh, to make certain right now that we move in an unbelievably aggressive way to make sure that our health care providers, our doctors and our nurses are not dying on the job trying to protect us. And that means that Trump has got to enforce in a vigorous way uh, the Defense Production Act to make sure that companies now are not producing T-shirts and underwear. That is not our major need at the moment. Masks, gowns, gloves are the need. And companies have got to do that. Some are already voluntarily doing it. They need to be compensated well. But they've got to transform uh, their production capabilities to deal with the crises uh, that we face right now. Uh, the other thing I think, Chris, you know, is that while Congress and there are going to be people up all night right now working on this $2 trillion bill, uh, people are working really hard. They understand the extent of the tragedy. We also have to take a deep breath and ask how we got to be in a country where so many people uh, are in financial despair right now. What I worry about is that at a time when half of our people are living paycheck to paycheck, those paychecks are stopping. There are people out there watching yeah. this program who are saying, I can't feed my kids tomorrow. How did we get there? How do we have a health care system which was so unprepared, among many other things, for this epidemic? So contrast that interview that you just saw with any interview that Joe Biden has done in the last week, he did three or four today, what you hear from Bernie Sanders is clarity and leadership. He is very quick to speak precisely to the needs of the American people. He says Donald Trump needs to utilize the Defense Production Act. We're hearing a lot about this, but he goes further. He explains exactly what it can do and why it's necessary. You know, we don't need com companies producing T-shirts and underwear, as he put it. We need them making equipment that can assist healthcare workers. Because guess what? If we don't have the necessary equipment to protect people with COVID-19, to protect the healthcare workers who are making sure that those people stay alive, then this crisis is going to get a lot worse really fast. And speaking to the financial need of people, what we need is obvious. $2,000 per month to people throughout the duration of this crisis. I think it should be permanent after that, 1000 at least, but that's something that will help. On top of that, we have to make sure that we suspend rent, we suspend mortgages, we don't allow people to go further into debt, suspend student loan payments, freeze all of that. Like, if we're not talking about cancellation at a bare minimum, 
everyone in government should be talking about freezes, but the fact that only Bernie Sanders and a handful of lawmakers are talking about this, it's kind of insane. It shows you how out of touch they are. But Bernie Sanders said something here that really should scare every single out of touch elite. This isn't surprising to you or me, but the out of touch elites in DC, the pundits, the politicians, they really need to heed his warning. He said, at a time when half our people are living paycheck to paycheck, those paychecks are stopping. I don't think people really get that. I don't think they grasp the gravity of the situation. People in government, that is. They don't get it. Like, you can, you know, fuck people over. You can leave them out to dry for decades. But at the end of the day... So long as there's no more distractions, there's no more need for them to continue, you know, being a cog in the machine because they're losing everything. That's when shit gets real, for lack of a better word. That's when social order starts, you know, going into chaos, right? People, they behave, they go to work, they come home and they distract themselves with video games and Netflix. But when you take away their livelihoods and they feel as if they have nothing left to lose, that's when people really start taking to the streets. That's when we see a general strike. So lawmakers who aren't taking this seriously, they do it at their own peril. Because if workers have nothing left and you're not willing to stop them from losing what little they have, do you honestly think that capitalism is going to be able to survive? No, the system will implode in on itself. And this is what anti-capitalists like myself have been warning people about. Capitalism, if you don't at least try to rein it in, it's difficult. But if you don't try, it eventually becomes so big to where it enters late stage capitalism and now end stage capitalism. And it starts to literally eat itself where it takes away everything from workers because that need to, you know, increase profits is so strong that, oh wait, we've taken all the money from the peasants and now they have nothing and they can't buy the products and the services that we're producing. What do we do? And it's reaching that point. COVID-19, this global pandemic could accelerate that process. And with the way that, you know, government is dragging its feet, we had a lot of talk about universal basic income temporarily but Democrats were talking about means testing it, and now Republicans don't really want to do anything for workers, at least what they're proposing isn't sufficient. But, you know, if Democrats go along with this, then they're also bailing out large industries, private companies, you know, corporate welfare, and there's no stipulations, no uh, assurances at all that that money isn't just going to go into stock buybacks, and, you know, we need it to help workers. So the situation is grim, and lawmakers, I don't think that they fully grasp what's about to happen, how society will devolve into chaos if they don't actually take this seriously, both from a healthcare standpoint and economically. But Bernie Sanders gets it. And look, there's still a chance. He can still be the president. He can still be the nominee. So half the country in the Democratic primary, they still haven't voted yet. I haven't voted. New Yorkers haven't voted yet. It's not too late. We could have a real leader. We could have a real leader. And it's tough. Bernie's going to struggle to get headlines during a global pandemic. It's difficult to, you know, organize when you can't knock on doors. But there's still a chance for us to turn this entire thing around, save the country and save the planet if Bernie's president. But anything short of that, I just don't think we have a chance. And even if he does become president, that doesn't mean that our path forward is easier. It's going to get tougher regardless. Our trajectory that we're on, you know, it, our prospects are relatively grim. So we just need someone who's willing to fight. That's it. And we can still we can still have that with Bernie Sanders. So whatever you do, convince convince people and your family um, digitally. Don't see them in person because they're social distancing. Convince them that they have to vote for Bernie Sanders if they actually want to change the country for the better, because he cares. He cares about the people. And this is self-sacrifice. He's not running for self-serving reasons. I mean, if he were wanting to be president, he probably would have ran when he were when he was younger. But I mean, he's running because he cares. Help him help you. Vote for Bernie Sanders if you haven't already. We still have a chance.